Hey, welcome back to VMworld 2013. This is theCUBE, our flagship program out the advanced extracted city from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Go to Wikibon.org for free content. Go to SiliconANGLE for the reference point for tech innovation. And go to SiliconANGLE.com uh, for all the footage. Also go to YouTube.com slash SiliconANGLE for all the replays. I'm joined with my co-host, Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante. Lee Caswell is here. He's the Vice President of Virtualization Product Group at Fusion IO. Lee, welcome back to theCUBE. Good Thank to see you. Thank you very again. much. Uh, it's great to be here. See you guys again. This uh, venue is terrific. Yeah, Love you're here in a new role, actually, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. New company, new role. Yeah. It's a uh, very exciting time. So, so how's it going for you? How many VM roles have you been to? <laughs> oh, yeah, since ten? the start, right? <laughs> yeah, are you a 10 year veteran? <laughs> exactly. So, so uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of change. And, uh, you know, since virtualization, I mean, Flash is the next big exciting thing. It's so, just so, so 10 years, I mean, a Lots changed. First five years. Just give us your perspective. You worked at VMware, right? Yeah. First five years and second five years. What's just what's the summary? What's the bumper sticker? You know, when we started off uh, back in like 2000, um, we basically looked and said, "Well, what are we going to virtualize first? And it was the easy stuff, right? Take all the uh, applications that were running that weren't very I/O intensive. It wasn't the Oracle databases we wanted to go put on on, on virtualization. Now <laughs> you've got what 70, 80 percent of workloads being virtualized. What's left? Well, all the hard stuff, right? And that's where Flash is coming in, is how do we go and take the hard applications and make those sing in a virtual environment? So obviously, you're at heading up the virtualization team at Fusion, is that yes, correct? That's, that's the right. new roles, that's the official title? Yes. Um, so what's the big news for you guys this week? You know, we've got some very exciting uh, deliverables that we've uh, shown. We have a technology demonstration we're doing on a new product called IOVDI. IOVDI basically solves the problem of how you get performance into virtual desktops without breaking persistent storage and giving you a cost that's less than a physical desktop, which is what everybody wanted from the start. So you have to solve the cost problem, solve the performance problem, IOVDI is that. That's the latest port, uh, the latest implementation of our IO Turbine software. So it's a very interesting way to go and say, we'll take all the benefits of the IO memory flash platform, which you know, have been the, you know, the yeah. basics of, of Fusion IO um, success. So you and, I had a, you and I had a chance to chat on uh, last week prior to the embargo of the news, yes. but one of the things that we were talking about, and then I was talking with Dave about earlier this day, was that everything at the top of the stack has always been this elusive dream, right? <laughs> when Paul Moritz laid out the original vision you know, in 2010, it was really laid out, we called it the software mainframe, whatever I want to call it. It was a stack, and at the top of the stack you had apps. VMware tried their hand at that now, Pivotal's out, outside, and but still there was a lot of work to do in the middle ground, right? So yes. I, I would say it got stalled a little bit, mainly because the hypervisor stuff, a lot of the middleware, big data hit the scene, storage virtualization, um, network virtualization, all kind of started to happen. Yes. So with that, what's happening above the stack? So stuff's starting to be commoditized, infrastructure service, platform service, but then the apps, data fabrics are there. So what's, you're at the top of the stack, you got to look up. <laughs> what's the view and what's the trends there? Well, one of the aspects of virtualizing Flash is that we're looking at basic hypervisor level virtualization first. And this was the phase one of what IO Turbine had to develop, which was how do we go and solve the IO Blender problem? So any virtual, virtual appliances or virtual uh, machines have to go and look carefully at how we're going to go take what looks like now a random workload, and how do we accelerate that? That was phase one. Now, we have with IOVDI a very interesting way to run in the guest and add more intelligence. And so the intelligence now could be, hey, in a desktop environment, how do I take advantage of common files to speed up boot times? How do I take advantage of the fact that there's a substantial amount of desktop writes that actually never matter? Remember your desktop, yeah. when that drive goes on, you're like, what's it doing? That's all data that doesn't ever have to go to the same. We can take advantage of this now intelligently of the guest and do some very interesting work to speed up acceleration, make sure desktops are, are working fast. And that's the sort of intelligence you look at, and it's all based on applications and solution knowledge. One of the things that I've been working on at Fusion IO. So uh, I, I got to ask you, Lee, <laughs> I've been coming to VMworld now, probably, I don't know, six or seven years, and, and I remember my first VMworld, I said, oh my gosh, 
storage is getting to get killed, <laughs> right? And it was everybody was complaining about storage, and and so, so then we started on this path of of integration, you know, VAI yes. and Vasa and and the like, and right. And every year Wikibon does this evaluation of the integration points, and we rank, you know, who's got what, and and I'm looking at it the other day, and I'm saying, all this stuff is designed to sort of minimize the, the spinning disk penalty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I'm looking at the integration points that relate to Flash, and there's like a handful of them. Mm -hmm. So, to the extent we get to that vision, it seems to be it's coming soon, where all my active data, we talked about this with uh, Gary earlier, where all my active data is served out of Flash, all those other integrations that I just spent all this time and money on <laughs> kind of become irrelevant. Um, well, that was my take. So the first time I've, I've articulated that, I wonder, you know, if you're an expert in, in, in this area and in products, I, is that a fair characterization? Yeah, for years, the disk drive has been doing a dual service. It's been providing both performance, which it's not very good at, and capacity, which it's very good yeah, at. Right. And so what's happening is, as you look at Flash right now, and this is one of the reasons Fusion IO is so successful early on, is a single PCI card serves the performance delivery of over 200 drives. And so what's happening now is yeah. there's this radical split happening where wherever you can take the performance and disaggregate it from the capacity needs, now that's changing extremely fast. And so we're seeing that overall where I'm going to use a disk for a relatively cold store, anywhere I can provide acceleration, the software stack is how we do that. Yeah, well, if I could do that through an API call, right, right based on some kind of policy. So, so where are we in terms of being able to do that? And what role does Fusion IO play in that regard? Yeah, very good question. Uh, we've done some very interesting things with IO Control, for example. This was an acquisition we had recently where we're now applying quality of service across, as a policy, across application environments. So if you want to have a SAN and basically run multiple applications, how do I go and make sure that I've got I've got performance now that I can allocate so that I can make sure that I'm getting the performance I need for the applications I care about. Allocating not just baseline performance, but quality of service becomes a very important differentiator that Fusion IO is driving. Okay, and I can in, in do that through an API call. That's right. right. It's an open and API. Yes, and you can go and actually allocate this on a policy base by your application. And I can change that pretty much on the fly? On the fly, yes. It's one way of thinking that it's not just raw, performance that users care about. It turns out what users care about, and you know this from your own experience, waiting for that, that little uh, you know, the hourglass to change, what you care about is you care about persistent, or let's see, consistent, consistent performance yeah. as much as you care about Predictable, absolute performance. Predictable, consistent performance, right. Yeah, the one and thing that uh, drives users nuts is if they don't know when something's going to complete. Right, and if it's too slow, then they'll throw it out and get a new one, but if it's consistent and predictable and I know what's coming, one then I can build processes around it. Here's one of the areas we're spending a lot of time on. We are so early with Flash, we spend a lot of time on solutions. So if you look at what are the key solutions that Flash accelerates today, well, it's databases, Server virtualization, VDI, big data. If you take those as a group, we have a set of customers that have deployed and seen successful uh, acceleration in the field, and we're just going to show other customers, here's how you can do this. We've stripped out all the risk of making this work in the field. So talk a little bit more about the, the customers and how the use cases are, are expanding, kind of where they sure. started and where you see them going. And I know that's, it, there's a wide variety, but I wonder if you can generalize, especially as your product line has become more more robust? Well, we've taken a mapping right now of whether you're on a server side, are you on the storage side? With caching, are you going to basically try and bridge the gap between these? And the applications look like this. So within databases, databases love block storage and they love fast response times. You can service more customers, you can save costs, you can consolidate infrastructure. These are terrific benefits now mm. for how Flash can make a difference. In server virtualization, We've got the ability to go and run more VMs more consistently. That's a huge driver of getting more virtual workloads going. Virtual desktops, got the same, same concept of how do I make sure that users get that level of consistent response times. And then lastly, in big data. You know, big data is all about processing. No data is deleted anymore. The, delay, the data that you have is just processed over and over and over again, and that processing is all consistent with high performance flash. So big data, you're talking about um, extending in-memory analytics potentially, persisting in-memory analytics, right? Every, yeah, we have some. Everybody's HANA crazy, but 
Hannah need, yeah, needs to persist that data. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of work on <laughs> Hannah lately. It needs, it's great, I mean, I love, we love the concept, but, but you talk to Hannah users and they keep telling you, well, it goes down a lot. <laughs> so, well, we you need to persist it. I know you guys are working hard on helping SAP out with that problem. Well, there's some very interesting applications. Uh, we announced Spotify as a customer, for example. All, streaming music is an ideal case of how do you have very fast performance over latency sensitive applications. These types of things and how you go and manage things like playlists, right, become very important for businesses that want to take all of the effort they were doing on managing I.O. Mm. Take those developers off that work, put them on developing new applications or new features that you're going to use to compete against your, you know, your, your competition. That's how you've changed the game right now is I don't have to actually worry about managing I.O. because we have thousands of IOPS to work with. Hundreds of thousands of IOPS. All of a sudden what was a scarce resource in the past, now you've got a lot of it. So think about re-architecting. That's the, that's the sort of, you know, uh, cathartic change we're going through right now. Lee, how do you talk to guys, first of all, there's two, there's two questions to this one. First one is Silicon Valley is always a new startup's coming on, so like, <laughs> sure. are there any seats left at the table in the I.O. game? Uh, we'll get to that one in a second, but I want you to get sure. to the second one first, which is, uh, if you're an IT guy and you got all this uh, storage laying around, yes, you know, NAS, SAN, DAS, yeah. any, all, all of this laying around, usually tied to some app, by going server side, talk about the dynamics that you guys get in there. Is it a rip and replace? Is it an extension? Do you guys commoditize it? Is it just you treat storage as a resource that can be commoditized? I mean, how do you view that? What's the solution address? It's very interesting. What, what, one thing we're finding is that there's so much extra capacity now because customers have been buying disks to deliver performance. That right. element, right, of having uh -huh. to buy, so you know, a, a 15K SAS drive gives you 150 IOPS. It costs seven dollars to get that level of uh, performance. Flash is relatively inexpensive at a nickel. So you can all of a sudden now, you can free up all of this capacity. So one of the things we're seeing first off is what drives buying decisions is how do I consolidate the infrastructure I have? We're consolidating physical infrastructure, we're consolidating licenses as well by having this level of performance. So that's one dynamic. Customers are come in different shapes and sizes. Some customers want to buy server side flash, some customers want to buy storage side flash. We're delivering both. We have uh, our, with our ION products and IO control products, if you want to buy storage, we have some very interesting ways to deploy it that way. If you want to buy servers, we got the fastest in the industry on the server side. So, um, you know, our, our metal, our, our mantra right now is, uh, you know, however you want to consume it, we're going to supply so it. So the economics is you can come in and maximize pre-existing investments same time, get that flash data center built out. Is that kind of like? Yeah, let me push it let to me the describe edge? one one way we're doing that with IOVDI, which is new for virtual desktops. We're coming in saying we're taking all the performance dependencies from the SAN and basically moving them into the server side. So by having it on the server side, now you can say, well, I'll just tap into the SAN for capacity, which is really what you wanted in the first place. I just wanted that SAN for data protection, and so the SAN administrator says, great, this is what I was hoping to do in the first place, give you a few terabytes, you're off and running, I deploy this on server side deployments. Basically gets you back into that seamless increments of, uh, of deployment. Well, we saw a lot of action today in the news, uh, uh, violin <laughs> filed to go public. We saw that. So competition there. There's always new startups coming out, so what do you, back to the startup question, there's always a new startup, uh, IO's hot, so you've yes. seen some innovation. What are you seeing on the, on the startup scene, and, and is there, are there any seats left at the table? Well, who knew storage was going to be so <laughs> sexy? <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> uh, I guess you guys did, right? <laughs> John Furrier <laughs> coined I quoted that storage was sexy. Did you really? Yeah. And well, Joe Tucci Joe, disagreed I asked with Joe you, Joe Tucci if storage was sexy. I'll he, tell you what, you <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I don't know if it's sexy, but he turns out it, he it was. He said it's hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, I mean, it, there's a lot of room for innovation left. This yeah. is what, you know, we're, we're seeing, you know, Flash by itself is one way to go and deploy this. There, there will be others right over time. What, what we're looking at is, once you take any imperfect media, and flash like disk is an imperfect media, you have to start thinking about, hey, how do I, how do I basically overcome some of the limitations? There's reliability considerations. I got to make it reliable, right? There's density. How do I go and aggregate it together? There's protection. I mean, all of these things. And so all of that tends to lead towards software innovation, right? Software innovation is where we're putting the bulk of our effort right now on making flash more, more okay, differentiated. So, so, so everybody wants a piece of you. I mean, you guys, you had like a four year lead <laughs> on, on the industry and you did this IPO and people said, oh wow, maybe yeah, not yeah. just a flash in the pan. And so, 
So now all these big guys investing, buying companies, et cetera. So you said software is where the innovation is. Is that how you keep your edge? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and, and help us understand you know, what we can expect generally. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. There's no doubt, and I've had experience in the past, um, I, I, at one time in my career I was selling sil silicon to Intel for 60 point margins. And the question was, so how could you get away with that, right? Those were the days, <laughs> 1982. And, and, the, <laughs> and, and the answer was, 84, 85. The value prop was not about the silicon, yeah, right. Was not about the, was not about the silicon itself. It was how did you prove out things like compatibility, software value add, and in our case at Fusion IO, solutions. What we've done and what we offer to customers is, it's not so much about like raw acceleration because anybody can pull a number off a data sheet and say, hey, we're faster in this one case. What we can show is we've made these customers this much more successful in the field. And so our value right now is to show that we're going to accelerate your success with Flash, not just accelerate some portion of your data. So what are those solutions? I mean, you talked about them briefly before, but so what, it's talking about them in generic terms, database, you know. Yeah, you bet. Stuff. It was interesting actually looking, we have a luxury from a marketing standpoint of saying they're actually fairly definable. So within the database case, Microsoft SQL Server. We've got Oracle, both for Rack, for Oracle 11, 12, .x, um, MySQL, if you look there. When you look into virtualization, well clearly we've got VMware today and then moving to Hyper-V, right? Um, within VDI, so it's both VMware for View and Citrix. Um, and then within big data, we've seen some very interesting wor um, some work there. And I'd like to comment on that for a minute yeah. because because of our success on Flash, just showing the raw performance, then we had application developers saying, hey, I'd like to rewrite the applications now. And so we've had some very good success with uh, uh, companies like SkySQL, MariaDB, Percona, of rewriting the applications now to take advantage of the native, um, the native um, benefits of Flash. Yeah, so which that's is a two really, orders of magnitude performance. It's a very yeah. interesting dynamic, right? So, yeah, so okay, so that's, um, and that's always been fundamental to your strategy and a big part of the it differentiation. And you guys are kind of unique in that area. I think you've got a well. Again, at some a big point, there. we're moving from the early adopters. So early adopters, right? They like words like visionary, disruptive, groundbreaking. This is going to be like, <laughs> well, to the later adopters, right? The CIO of a grain company in the Midwest, like that sounds pretty scary. So what we've done now is we've reduced the risk, saying, hey, you get these benefits. And one of the things we have, we have a theme uh, saying. Same planet, different world. And that is designed <laughs> around the aha moment that occurs when people realize, are you kidding me? 40% of our customers see more than 10x performance in their applications. 10x in the field from our surveys. 10x performance, can you imagine the moment where you go, really? Seriously, I could do that? Well, the norm is to get that low latency, you know, mobile feel, like, hey, there you, you go. Know, no disk at all. But, you know, I think that's the key. So I want to ask you a final question as we wrap up this sure, segment. Please. Is what's, so, so you guys obviously are doing great, and we were talking earlier with Gary Orenstein and some other folks, the stuff under the, under the hood is where all the action is in the data center. So, yes. so I'm going to find data centers, not just one thing, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of parts. Yes. Flash is, is a big part of it. Yep. What is the big takeaway for folks out there? Share with them, I'll give you the last word. Share with them, in your own words, what's going on with Flash this year at VMworld, its 10th anniversary. So Flash, the benefits of Flash are so compelling, it's going to be deployed everywhere where disk has been deployed. When you think about it that way, all of a sudden you look at the server side, you look at the storage side, and you look at how you bridge the gap in between, we're going to see Flash come on in everyone. And what Fusion IO has done is said, we're going to be able to give you solutions. However you want to consume it, we'll give an offering there that you can go and say, the advantages that we've developed in hardware and software, take that and deploy it at low risk. Final question, just Please. to add one more. You've been a VMware veteran, you're an industry vet, been around the block, you've seen it, the movie <laughs> a few times, uh, kids going to college, our kids <laughs> going to college, so, yes. but you've been to all the VM worlds. What, what can you share the folks from the beginning of the first VM world to now, 10 years, what has happened? How, how big has it become? What's, can you give any order of magnitude, share some perspective or experiences? Sure, you know, in, in the early days the question was, hey, there was a customer question of, virtualization, is it safe? Right, just to start off with, like will my data, like will my apps run? And so you go through that first phase, right, of jumping in the pool. 
Like, am I gonna jump in? Is it okay, right? And then you jump in and you're like, wow, well that was pretty good, right? One of my experiences early on was that the first benefit was about consolidation because that drove cost improvement. And then the subsequent value was around high availability and management. We're seeing the same thing in Flash right now. And you're seeing everyone get in the act. The first element is, hey, is it safe? Is it going to work? How can I consolidate infrastructure? We're going through that, we've gone through that phase. Now it's about how do I manage this? How do I make sure it works in the applications? How do I get HA? How do I support vMotion? These are the questions customers are asking. It's an integration question. We think we're in a great position to capitalize on that. Lee Castle with Fusion.io, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with a wrap up after this short break, day one. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube here live at VMworld in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>